My name is Simon Shim. Um, I'm one of the guest editor of the New Memory on the special issue from i3 Computer. My guest today is uh, Anirudh Badam. He is a researcher at Microsoft Research. Uh, he received a PhD in computer science in 2012 from Princeton University. Uh, welcome to the um, interview. Uh, my first question is, can you describe your recent work at Microsoft? So uh, at Microsoft, I've been uh, working uh, towards using NAND flash as a slower but denser form of memory. What I mean by this is that you know I want to take NAND flash and present it to the applications as uh, a slower but denser form of uh, DRAM, right? And the reason why this makes sense is that you know DRAM is getting expensive, uh, or, or rather, I mean DRAM is scaling. But the problem is that the rate at which data is increasing, the rate at which uh, the demand from the applications to you know uh, to store more data to store more data not only to store more data but also to compute on larger amounts of data is growing at a much higher rate so there is this sort of a divide between what the application needs and what the technology is being able to uh, is is able to provide today and uh, my aim is to you know sort of bridge this gap using new memory technologies like flash uh, and and my work uh, primarily aims at using flash as a DRAM substitute. What I mean by this is that traditionally a NAND flash has been used as a, a disk re replacement or as a disk augmentation. So what they use is uh, either move your entire data from uh, magnetic disks, that is, you know, spindle-based magnetic disks, onto an SSD, like, uh, a NAND flash-based SSD, or use the SSD as a block cache for your disk operations. It is a very good approach, but uh, some of the applications uh, actually incur a high amount of latency within the operating system and multiple software layers before they actually get to the storage subsystem, which is essentially the disk. And NAND flash has a latency low enough that you'll start, uh, that the application starts seeing uh, a huge amount of software latency before it gets to uh, the SSD if it uses it via the storage stack. So my work essentially moves the NAND flash higher up into the hierarchy of uh, you know memory and storage where it lets the application use flash directly as memory without any of the software overhead from you know using legacy software <coughs> legacy storage software for accessing flash so at princeton before i came here 9 months ago i was working on this system called ssd alloc what it does is uh, it presents to the uh, user uh, uh, an object based uh, memory storage where uh, memory is a, uh, where the memory is actually backed by a flash device, and uh, and DRAM is transparently used for caching, uh, you know, the most popular data that the application is interested in. Now, SSD alloc has been, uh, you know, tested by many different uh, other research groups and uh, you know other companies for their products as well, and it is actually uh, being shipped by Fusion IO uh, uh, in their product lineup. And SSD alloc is primarily uh, intended towards applications with a large amount of memory footprint. Uh, you can think of databases which are using a large amount of buffer cache so that you know they can cache as much data in memory as possible. And uh, key value stores or even caches are, uh, that are trying to cache uh, a large amount of data. For example, systems like memcache, which uh, you know cache a lot, of, uh, a lot of data from the databases. So those sort of workloads are what SSD alloc is intended for. And uh, the reason why we are using this as memory, using flash as memory, is uh, most of the systems which have a memory and a storage component uh, uh, optimize their memory component to be, you know, uh, low latency and also to be highly concurrent. Because memory, I mean, the traditional memory uh, technology, which is DRAM, has lower latency and also has a high amount of concurrency. On the other hand, the storage subsystem of most of these uh, systems is not very optimized for low latency and high concurrency. And that's the reason why we propose using NAND flash as a slower form of memory instead of a faster form of disk. And I've been continuing that line of work at Microsoft Research as well, where we're trying to uh, see what are the optimizations required inside the uh, memory manager like malloc, uh, all the way down to the physical memory manager within the uh, operating system to be able to provide uh, the support of being able to use flash as slower memory instead of being able to uh, instead of using it as a faster disk okay so my second question is uh, can you explain how the new memory can impact uh, designing an operating system in the database right so new memories are uh, 
uh, is sort of an umbrella term for many of these new memory technologies that are showing up, which are you know essentially different from DRAM and uh, magnetic disks. So it could be NAND flash, or it could be, uh, I mean, one could be talking about NAND flash, one could be talking about uh, PCM, one could be talking about memristors or uh, spin, uh, spin torque transfer uh, memory or, uh, or even magnetic uh, RAM. So each of these technologies has a different kind of a characteristic. Some of these are uh, what is termed as byte addressable in the sense that you know you can make modifications and you can access these devices efficiently at a byte, uh, a byte granularity or maybe even a word granularity or even larger than that. And some of these are uh, block devices, I mean like NAND flash. It, I mean, it is possible to provide a byte, uh, byte addressable NAND flash, but it's not very efficient to do so. And uh, on the other hand, these devices also are different slightly from traditional memory technology like DRAM because of their volatility, uh, because of their non-volatile nature. So what these devices, these new memory technologies are providing us is that you know they're providing low latency uh, durability. So traditionally in a, in a system, if you wanted durability, you, either, uh, you had to wait for a, a, a write to a magnetic disk, a spindle disk. So this actually required anywhere between 8 milliseconds to you know, 16 to 20 milliseconds, depending on which disk you're using. On the other hand, these technologies you know, promise uh, durability, essentially non-volatility for your data uh, on the order of you know, maybe 4 to 10 times the, the, write, uh, the write latency of uh, DRAM. So that's a good thing, which means that you know the amount of time that you need to make sure that your data has been durably, uh, durably stored go, uh, has gone down by you know several orders of magnitude. And and the other thing that these systems are uh, providing, as I said before, is byte addressable persistence. So previously you had only you know persistence at a granularity of a block. So if you want to to persist data, you had to write uh, uh, a, uh, you had to write uh, the equivalent of number of blocks. So if you had if you had very little uh, data to be persisted, let's say you, you edited only a few bytes or, of your data and you wanted to persist this, you had to persist an entire block. And that, not only, that not only increased the latency, but also increased the complexity of the software, which had to you know, figure out which blocks are now, you know, include all the data that you had modified and things like that. Now this, all this is gone essentially because uh, this is uh, directly byte addressable, directly addressable by the CPU and, you know, uh, Making things durable is as simple as flushing your CPU cache. So that that also uh, reduces the complexity of most of the software that goes into the operating system and databases to ensure that your data, regardless of what granularity uh, the dirty uh, data is, it is uh, guaranteed to be durable. And the other aspect that uh, these technologies uh, uh, promise is that you know they uh, right from the onset they I mean they I mean they they are they are claimed to be, you know, much more scalable than DRAM in the sense that, you know, today, today, I mean, the largest DRAM DIM that you can obtain is 32 GB. I mean, Samsung and Kingston and other companies are te testing a 64 GB DIM, but you know, it's not going to be here until 2015 or 2016. Uh, it could be sometime earlier than that. I mean, we never know. But uh, these technologies aim to be much more scalable than DRAM in the sense that, you know, uh, once these technologies start scaling, maybe we can get as much as uh, 128 or 256 uh, uh, GB DIMMs of these uh, technologies. And they also, they also you know, uh, uh, try to be, uh, sorry, they are, they're also by design uh, much more scalable than DRAM in the sense that, you know, when, when we hit the scalability uh, bottlenecks of DRAM, uh, Maybe you, we can use these technologies to go to I don't know a terabyte or even two terabytes of DRAM on a per rack unit basis for the server. So these technologies uh, aim to provide a more physical memory, uh, more physical memory. So uh, most of the operating system optimizations that are required to make sure that you know the, the memory footprint needs to be lower and things like that might not be needed when these uh, when these technologies actually scale up the amount of physical memory that you have in the system and this is not even talking about uh, the fact that you know new memory technologies are actually providing uh, non volatility even for applications that are not even worried about uh, that don't even want to exploit the non volatility the, these technologies provide the advantage of being much more scalable than DRAM and uh, and that is useful for uh, regardless of whether they're uh, uh, file systems or uh, you know databases. Existing file systems and databases can see ready uh, can see uh, immediate performance improvement if you if you just throw a bunch of more uh, physical memory at these systems, right? I mean because these these systems are optimized 
uh, to use more uh, the systems are optimized to make the best use of as much DRAM that uh, they have so the, the more you can cache in memory the more uh, the better it is going to be the second advantage is as I initially stated is byte addressable persistence so inside file systems if you're editing certain metadata which, I mean, most of the times if you're editing metadata like you know a timestamp uh, for you know uh, modifying a file or you know timestamp for modifying a uh, or a directory entry you you previously had to you know uh, persist multiple blocks of data to the uh, disk before you can actually say that the file system is in a consistent state now if you're doing these uh, small metadata updates you don't have to uh, if you're doing these metadata updates using new memory technologies, you don't have to think of uh, data, dirty data in terms of blocks anymore. So that drastically reduces the complexity of these systems. So if you can put all your metadata as a in-memory data structure, uh, a large complexity of the file systems of you know the inode table or the super nodes, all that goes away. You can have a simple in-memory like data structure like a B3, or a much simpler, uh, or, or a much simpler structure like a hash table to represent you know uh, the things inside a file system. And most of these things have been efficiently written for DRAM. All we need to take care is whenever we are flushing the CPU, we are doing it in a consistent manner. And this this also drastically reduces the simplicity of uh, designing file systems and databases, which do a large number of uh, fine granular updates. And uh, finally, coming to the third uh, uh, benefit of new memory technologies, which is uh, which I stated was you know low latency durability. So these uh, these new memory technologies aim to provide latency at a durability of you know as I said as I stated before four to ten times anywhere between four to ten times of DRAM. Now I agree that this is much higher than DRAM, but this is orders of magnitude faster than what uh, disk provides. So if you have if you have systems which which are performing a huge number of transactions which have a which have a uh, which have a stringent durability uh, requirement, it means that you know a large number of transactions might be outstanding currently just waiting uh, on the disk to complete the IO, uh, right IO. Now all that is gone purely because you know th these uh, new memory technologies are guaranteeing low latency, which means that uh, systems which uh, which are performing acid transactions will see a dramatic reduction in their uh, latency, end-to-end -end latency. So from, from when the transaction uh, begins to when the, uh, the engine actually uh, tells the application that the transaction has been durably committed. And that that increases the performance of the application and also helps uh, in reducing the complexity of the system because there's not many you don't have to worry about you know too many outstanding transactions anymore and that that also reduces uh, the lock contention uh, uh, drastically because if the transactions are committing faster you mean it it could mean that you know there's higher amount of concurrency uh, in the system uh, possible now purely because you know locks are being uh, let go of much earlier than you know what uh, the original system that was designed for disk uh, was you know doing so in my opinion these are the three main advantages that uh, uh, new memory technologies provide and one very related advantage uh, to these the fourth i would say a sub advantage is the fact that you know new memory technology can uh, because of its low latency durability and byte addressable uh, uh, persistence can provide is that uh, instant reboot and shutdown so instant reboot and shutdown is essentially, you know, as soon as you hit uh, the power off or you know the standby button, everything, you know, uh, the CPU flushes, it caches. That's it. This, the whole system can power down, which means that you know the power down, uh, powering down a machine can be as simple as uh, flushing a CPU cache. On the other hand, if you make sure that the your o entire OS state is designed in a persistent manner, uh, the reboot of a, or, or power up of a device could be as, as simple as you know just loading the process from a ready queue onto the CPU as fast as that so 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 in essence these are the four advantages that you know the new memory technologies will be providing for applications whether it be it file systems or databases or you know even a general purpose operating system hey thanks for joining us mm -hmm.